The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered round Jesus. And they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and the Jews in general follow the tradition of the elders and never eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders, but eat their food with unclean hands? He answered, It was of you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of scripture. This people honours me only with lip service, while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandment of God to cling to human traditions. He called the people to him again and said, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that goes into a man from outside can make him unclean. It is the things that come out of a man that make him unclean. For it is from within, from men's hearts, that evil intentions emerge. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, malice, deceit, indecency, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and make a man unclean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, this morning, I would like to ask, did you all wash your face when you got up? Did you wash your hands before you ate your breakfast? Okay, I hope you did. <laughs> Now, our dear Lord Jesus has nothing against us washing our hands, keeping our hygiene yeah, up to standard. And these are good practices. Okay? There's nothing wrong about that. And we teach our children to do it. We ourselves practice it. And as we know, as we went through the pandemic, how important uh, washing our hands are, isn't it? And even sometimes if necessary, if we are sick, we should wear a face mask to protect others or when we are in a very crowded area, especially if you're an elderly person. So taking care of our health, taking care of hygiene, these are things not to be taken for granted. Okay, so definitely Jesus has another point, more important, and that is he wants us to not forget about the cleanliness of the heart. And just as we put so much effort to keep our bodies clean, to keep our hands clean, we must make even more effort to keep our hearts clean. Okay, so let me ask all of you here present, I ask myself also, is my heart clean? Now, if so happens, you answer no, my heart is not clean, and honestly you answer that it's not, there must be a reason. Maybe you committed some sin, maybe some guilt is troubling you because you have done something wrong, and you need to be reconciled with God or with your neighbour. Yeah, so sin, it dirties our heart, our soul, our being. And it's true, we need to cleanse ourselves. And how do we do that as Catholics? We ask God for forgiveness during the Mass. Uh, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Yeah, we ask everybody for pardon. And in more serious situations, we also go to confession. Okay? And in confession, we receive the forgiveness of our sins. And yes, we will feel that after confession, oh, I'm clean now. That's what a lot of people will say after the Advent penitentials, the Lenten penitentials. And really, if you have made a good confession, you really feel, I'm so clean now. How long you remain clean is another question. <laughs> okay, but the important thing is, there is a way to clean our hearts. And if we understand that God forgives us our sins, 
we repent, He forgives us, then we know there is a way to salvation. But my dear brothers and sisters, I'm sure you have also experienced it many a times that you keep going to confession for the same sins until you are fed up even with yourself. Why am I always committing the same sins? Some people, very frustratingly, they will come and they will tell the priest, Father, I don't know why I'm always committing the same sins. They'll be angry with themselves even. What's wrong with me? <laughs> and you know, this is something we hear so often. And some will even say, Ah, yeah, Father, actually I didn't want to come to confession. Every time also I'm coming, I'm committing the same sins, I'm confessing the same sins. Also, I'm fed up with myself. I'm sure God is fed up with me also. <laughs> A lot of these kind of sentiments, you know, people have. And yes, it's really frustrating when you're trying to be clean from sin and you keep falling into the same sin, right? And you really deserve it, you feel that you deserve to be scolded for it or really something must be wrong. And you know what? If we reflect further on this, actually, there is nothing surprising. Do you know why we keep falling back into the same sins? Because the root of those sins is still present in our heart. Uh, this is the real problem. So you come to confession, yes, your sins are forgiven. But the roots of those sins are still there. Your heart may be clean on the surface at the moment after confession, but your heart is still not yet pure. It may be clean, but it's not yet pure. Change the words a bit. It's not yet holy. And why? Because of the presence of all these roots of sin. And Jesus mentioned so many today, long list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. He gave 12. Yeah, so many things. And traditionally, in our Catholic tradition, simplify things, we will speak of the seven capital sins, which are not sins per se, but they are the causes of sin. And what are they? Things like pride, envy, sloth, Last, Okay, just the name. That's already four. Go and find out what are the rest. There are seven. All right. But as you see, the list of Jesus is longer. There seem to be 12. It depends how you categorize them. But these are the causes of sin. So, for example, if you are struggling with sins against the sixth commandment, for Catholics, sixth commandment is, thou shalt not commit adultery. Protestants have a different way of numbering the commandments. Okay. So when we say sixth commandment, we all know sin against the flesh. Uh, adultery and all these things and we might find we are falling time and time again in six commandment sins so the real problem is because lust is still deeply rooted in our heart this just give one an example and it applies to all the other sins whatever it may be the root of the sin is still there and because of that you cannot escape out of it no matter how you try, you keep on fumbling and fumbling and falling into the same trap. Because the trap is always there in your heart, the root. Okay, so make that clear. So then the issue is more than just avoiding sin and going for confession, being forgiven our sins. How can we remove the root of these sins? Uh, that is the more important question. And yes, it is much more difficult. More difficult than plucking up courage, putting aside your pride and going for confession. Telling your sins to another sinner to ask for God's forgiveness. Even for some, that's already a struggle, understandably so. But to remove the roots of sin in our life, it really takes so much more. And that's what the church is trying to encourage us actually to have that pure heart, to live a holy life, to have a holy heart. And it comes along with living a life of prayer, first and foremost. We need to be a person of prayer. And prayer is not just once a week when I come for my Sunday Mass. That is the bare minimum. But prayer should be something that we do on a daily basis. Now, each one of us must find our own way to pray. It's not the same for everyone. For some, praying the rosary is helpful. For others, they like to talk to God. For others, they like to keep silence. 
So some, they like to come to church and sit before the Blessed Sacrament. There are so many ways to pray. For some, they like to go to the grotto, lighting candles. Somehow or other, lighting the candles, looking at Mother Mary's statue, they are moved to pray. It helps them to communicate with God through the intercession of the saints. So prayer is one of those things that we must have in our life. And unfortunately, we are having it in too small doses and too infrequently. So we really find our Christian life of struggling with sin a losing battle because we are not praying enough. That's the number one thing. And with that already wrong, it's hard to get anything else right. Now on top of that, we are also taught to live a life of moderation. We live in the world, but we are called not to be of the world. We can't help but live in the world. But as the second reading today tells us, we must be, we must keep ourselves uncontaminated by the world. The world actually makes those roots of sin in us grow. When I talk about the world, the evil influences in the world which tell us to be greedy, which tell us to be avaricious, which tell us to step on our neighbour, to get a better position at workplace, which tell us to disregard the poor, all kinds of things, which tell us to also engage in lust, feed our desires, pamper ourselves, and all those things, the influences of the world. That contamination, if it is present all the time, it's going to be hard for us to get that pure heart. So you see why, my dear brothers and sisters, we are all struggling so much. Because we are not taking the necessary measures to live a holy life. And yes, a holy life is more than just fulfilling your Sunday obligation, more than just ensuring that, you know, I don't have any mortal sins on my soul so that when I die, I can go to purgatory at least or then even maybe go straight to heaven, whatever it is. Holiness is more than that, worrying about where I will end up after I die. But being really transformed as a person with a pure and holy heart. That is the real goal of the Christian life. To be transformed into a person with a pure and holy heart. Not just about being free from mortal sin so that I can go to heaven that still surface level, surface level Christianity. One step deeper, authentic Christianity is that which aims for the total conversion, regeneration, rehabilitation of the broken human being. And yes, we are broken by sin. And every one of us can attest to that brokenness. You know when we say we go and preach the good news, why are we preaching the good news? To help people be aware of the brokenness of humanity, but to offer them the message of hope and salvation that says that this brokenness can be healed. And what is now soiled can be made clean. And not only that, it can be made pure and it can be made holy. That is the real program of the Christian life. And we must never lose sight of it. Okay, I think I, you have got the message ready. So this transformation that we are seeking, that's really why we are Christians. And without a solid, firm relationship with God through a life of prayer, a consistent dedicated life of prayer without the practice of moderation in the enjoyment of the things of the world, we cannot ever attain that purity and holiness that God wants of us. Okay, coming to my final uh, point, just to draw our attention to the second reading the very last part of the second reading as a closing statement to my homily this morning. St. James tells us, pure, unspoiled religion. Pure, unspoiled religion. 
in the eyes of God our Father is this. Okay, what is it? Coming to the help of orphans and widows when they need it and keeping oneself uncontaminated by the world. Okay, so very clearly, St. James tells us, not only we must have good intentions, these good intentions also will translate into deeds, good works. He gives an example, coming to the help of orphans and widows. There are so many other works that we can do to express the charity of God, the love of God. And that is the fruit of a pure and holy heart. The fruit of a pure and holy heart, my dear brothers and sisters, is boundless, unconditional love for suffering humanity. And so if you are really someone transformed in Christ, you will have that care and concern. And not only will you have it as an intention in your mind and heart, moved by the Holy Spirit, you will be an apostle of God's love doing his works of love, being his instrument of love. And this is my wish for all of us here. This is what it really means to be a Christian. And what a beautiful thing it is. And when Christians are true to their vocation, that is when we are really salt to the earth and light to the world.